repeatedly asked CSL whether it had mixed plasma from other countries with Australian plasma. It was always told that plasma from Australia and New Zealand only had been mixed. No plasma from other countries had been mixed. This is also what they said in the 2004 Senate inquiry. The Foundation was surprised at the information I produced, which showed that CSL clearly was mixing plasma from New Guinea, the Pacific Islands, Southeast Asia, and plasma from Australia and New Zealand. In the same interview, Mr. Jack maintained that the practice had stopped in the mid 1980s. Yet there is evidence on CSL's own letterhead which shows that it continued until at least May 1986. The practice was vigorously defended then as being absolutely necessary. At this time, the Red Cross Blood Transfusion Service wrote to CSL and said that on the basis of CSL's refusal to change this practice and legal advice it received with regard to the liability which the Red Cross would have to bear, it was no longer prepared to use CSL blood products. There is evidence to show that this practice did not cease in 1986, but continued. In 1984, an independent review by a senior officer of the National Biological Standards Laboratory revealed that the sterilisation of CSL's blood products was inadequate. Despite the fact that this officer made proposals for improvement, it seems very likely there was no change in these practices until at least December 1992. The question is, when CSL was sold, was there an indemnity to cover the new owners so that they would not be liable in the event of a claim relating to blood plasma, which came from mixed plasma, that is, containing plasma other than from New Zealand and Australia? If that indemnity, indemnity was not there, were the prospective new owners who would have bought shares in response to the prospectus informed? One more little bit. The fact of the matter is that the prospectus associated with the state, the sale of CSL, did mention this practice, did not mention this practice, sorry. Indeed, the indemnities given at the time were very carefully crafted to provide an indemnity with respect to products made from Australia and New Zealand plasma, but not plasma coming from other countries. Yet we know from quite a lot of other evidence that these sources were being used. Clearly, there is now a possibility of charges. That was back then. They were, they were talking about charging Oh. Sophie, Sophie Scott, it's not a story. Sophie Scott, you're a medical reporter. Is that the reason you won't investigate because this needs a criminal reporter? Sophie Scott, did you just hear this? 1,400 haemophiliacs were killed when high-risk blood was imported and mixed into Australia's blood plasma supply, Sophie Scott. We have evidence also, Sophie Scott, and Gavin Morris at the ABC, News Director, Head of News Investigations, Look at they, where they used to get, they used to exploit um, high risk products and they used to recruit them for vaccine development in the 1980s, Sophie Scott. We've sent you this evidence, Sophie Scott. Sue actually sent it to you. There, there you go, Sophie Scott. No need to investigate, eh? This is during the HIV crisis, Sophie Scott. This is a gay publication. No problem with that, Sophie Scott. No problem. We've, we, we, we've got loads of friends. We're all very close and we all want answers because the gay community were vilified, Sophie Scott, unfortunately, when the Red Cross told them they should stop donating blood in the 1980s and suggested that promiscuous homosexuals should stop donating. And the public mistook that for thinking that uh, the gay community, the LGBT community is somehow reckless when they were anything but. They've been recruited, Sophie Scott and Gavin Morris, Head of News and Investigations. They've been recruited as blood donors, as blood donors. How do you think that went during the HIV crisis to ask high-risk blood donors in sexually explicit publications to donate blood? Thousands of people ended up with hepatitis C and HIV in Australia from, from blood transfusions and blood products. And it's never had an investigation of any meaning from the ABC there's never been an investigation, but what there has been is plenty of, uh, back, plenty of applause for the chair of the ABC, Ida Butros. Ida Butros during the 1980s was the, the face of Australia's AIDS campaign, okay? But now we have evidence 
that in 1985, she was also a blood promoter. She said that the Australian Red Cross blood was safe and reliable. And she said, Greg, that haemophilia treatments had been purified when they were anything but. And every single person that took these supposed purified haemophilia treatments ended up with the deadly hepatitis C virus. Ida Butros, Sophie Scott, Gavin Morris, Four Corners, 7.30 report, the list goes on. But you played me for a fool and you played this group for a fool for decades. We went to you in good faith. I remember all those times we persuaded, we bent over backwards, we showed you the numbers, you would not investigate. Well, now we know, Sophie Scott, now we know that this is a cover-up and you and your network are implicated. Now, anyone could see that, Greg. Definitely. Definitely. I'll just finish off on, this, on a summary of this uh, study, uh, the regulation and scrutiny of CSL. The study found chronic inadequate scrutiny and regulation of CSL by the health department, successive ministers and parliament of, CS and parliament of CSL as the nation's monopoly processor of blood products under community services or natural interest obligations. This lack was somewhat ameliorated by the new TGA in the 90s, but remains inadequate. The inadequacies applied to CSL as a statutory commission from 1961, and later when it was also a company and then also a government business enterprise. The opportunities for effective scrutiny and regulation have in some areas now been diminished by CSL's sale. So for a company, an organisation they said should never ever be sold, we know why it was sold, don't we? To get rid of all this, all these reports about how they inadequate the buildings were, the cleaning. They, as I've stated before, they cannot clean the vats where the blood is pooled. So if you're blue, pooling blood from Southeast Asia today and tomorrow you want to do Australia and New Zealand blood, it doesn't matter. It's so great. they just pooled it all together. But Greg, you know, we're getting somewhere, you and I, and, and you know, it's been so good when, since we've been doing this together. What's been really good is we're really peeling back the onion now, okay? And I'll tell you what, though, it's scary stuff because I've got to tell you, neither Greg or I ever, envis ever envisaged uh, that the ABC would be involved in, in the cover-up of this. We never did. I, and if you, I can prove it. I'll tell you how. Because we can actually show that we made many attempts to actually go to the ABC. I actually made a complaint. I made a complaint, a couple of complaints about the ABC, official complaints. This was after a Four Corners episode that they ran in, I think, 2017, which was a year about CSL uh, blood collection and the, the blood plasma business, right? And collecting from, from uh, paid donors and so on, right? And at the end of that Four Corners episode, the actual host, I can't, I can't find it, Sarah Ferguson. Okay, then Sarah Ferguson, that's it, Sue. Sarah Ferguson comes on and reads out the statement from CSL. I thought this is really bizarre. Why would they do that? It talked about CSL's 100 years of excellence. And I just thought, I've never seen, seen Four Corners do that before. Seemed weird. And now I, I'm beginning to think everything's weird with, with the ABC not investigating what's happened here. I mean, right now there's an inquiry in the United Kingdom called the Infected Blood Inquiry. It's into their nation's worst medical scandal, contaminated blood. They actually have a huge role in our scandal. The BBC are reporting, their media are reporting, Greg, our BBC, uh, our ABC, not one report. They've not come to you once asking, hey, Greg, what's your feeling about the inquiry overseas? Or they haven't come to me. You know, they, they came to me, asked me some questions. I've been on there for a couple of radio shows and crap like that. But you see, the thing is, we're talking about our nation's deadliest medical scandal. They don't have to have me on, but they have to have Greg on. That's what we've been asking. I've been demanding, have Greg fall on. We had one of their reporters, Grace Tobin from 7.30 Report. We were about to get her uh, to listen to you. Then suddenly, bang, the line goes dead. Every time we try and get to the haemophilia issue, 2,000 haemophiliacs uh, are estimated probably infected by their blood products, 1,400 deaths. Every time we try and get it onto the mainstream media or the ABC, bang. What do you reckon, Greg? That's right, mate, that's right. As we pointed out, there's more than, there's 1,400 dead. There's a lot more of us who are still trying to survive what they did to us in the 80s. And here we've got all the proof to point to that and no one's listening. 
And also, uh, the fact is this, the indemnity that CSL was given covered any infections arising from Red Cross collected Australian blood donations. It made no reference to them being indemnified for anything that the government didn't really know about or denies. For example, CSL were mixing blood from Hong Kong, from Malaysia, from Papua New Guinea, and from Indonesia and all sorts of places. Now, as Greg said, this was in the 1980s when Greg received his Factor A product, and this global contaminated blood scandal, the part of it that affected haemophiliacs was all about the global blood plasma business. And so what the UK did was it actually imported high-risk blood from the United States. And a big part of that is, is their inquiry. But CSL, they're off the radar because see, Sophie Scott, everyone else knows about this high-risk imported blood business, right? Everyone else has had public broadcasters and they have major investigations. But Sophie Scott in Australia, no. She says it's, 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 not, it's not worth investigating. There's nothing to see here. So as, have you just exposed that, Greg, that they've got some answering to do for any decent reporter at this you know a proper journalist looks at this issue greg and says you know the first thing they do they go okay how many people are we talking about and as soon as greg goes 1400 australians were killed by a treatment that they were told were purified the journalist anywhere else in the world says that's a story unless you're a journalist in china or or you're a journalist in iran maybe it might be different or a journalist in the bad old days of russia maybe it'd be different but in good old australia that's a story all day long and if our public broadcaster keeps charging us money and taking tax dollars off us, they're thieves because they're stealing. Because that, that's not journalism. That's, that's bullshit. And the fact that Australia is not being heard of, the fact that our global contaminated blood scandal, the friends, haemophiliacs in Canada, haemophiliacs in the UK think, man, you guys are getting blocked down there. No one's telling our story. No one's telling your story, Greg. Can you see that, Charles? <clears throat> I can see a TV screen. What do you got there? UK infected blood inquiry. It's on at the moment. This is what right. we're talking about. Their inquiry right. is actually running now on YouTube. Anyone listening yep. here tonight can now look this up on YouTube. Follow the inquiry a little bit over there. This is exactly what we're talking about here, what they're investigating there. Biggest inquiry in UK history. What do we get? We get some reporter working for the ABC who doesn't believe we have a story. That's the comparison between Australia and the UK. I'll just add to that, the English, as we stated in an earlier podcast, have been getting paid assistance, financial assistance, since 2003. They're already on what I believe is a pretty good wicket, and they're still going for compensation. Here in Australia, we get nothing. We don't only not get financial assistance, we don't get any help with our medical costs. I've got to travel over an hour to the hospital that I've done sometimes multiple times in a week. I've got to go through tolls, I've got to pay fuel, parking. I've got to have to pay for some of my own tests because they won't do them. Meanwhile, here they have an inquiry going on in the UK to give people who are already getting assistance more compensation. What, what makes the English so much better than us? Are we still convicts down here? Men like Greg and I spent more than a generation because she didn't report it, because the ABC didn't do their job. We spent a generation or more, and others, and blood transfusion victims, and women in our group, and mothers in our group, women that lost marriages because their husbands would not believe that this thing was real and that they should be shown compassion and that they deserve <coughs> acknowledgement in through hell. No. Everyone that I've ever written to, everyone I've asked for assistance, I'm going to hold all those people to account. That is one thing I promise before I do go, is all these people who have refused to help are going to be held to account. Whether we do oh, it through okay. Australia or English authorities, I don't know, but they will be held. Sophie Scott's going to be one of them.